Hello everyone, it is May 12th, 2020, and we are in the midst of the coronavirus COVID-19 shutdown. And for probably close to two months now, it's been pretty difficult to buy basic disinfecting products, whether it's disinfecting wipes, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer, etc. And so during this time, I've seen a lot of people come up with DIY instructionals on how to make these products on your own, which is great uh, if the information is all accurate. And unfortunately, there is a lot out there that I'm seeing where the information is not accurate, incorrect concentrations, uh, incorrect dwell times, or people not talking about dwell times. And that can be dangerous in this day and age, especially with this pandemic going on. And one of the products that I do see that is still available to purchase, but I see a lot of people using incorrectly, are these new foam sanitizing tablets. So the reason for this video is I want to show you the proper way of using this uh, and to clear up some, some misconceptions and a, a little bit of education on the difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. So let's start there. Looking at this piece of paper, that's the surface you wanna clean. The little purple dots represent pathogens. And that can be bacteria, viruses, mold spores, etc. These things on top, that's just dirt and debris. And so when you're cleaning something, you're basically doing this. Cleaning the dirt and debris off, but it doesn't do anything to the pathogens on the surface. Next comes sanitization or sanitizing. So when you sanitize the surface, this is what you're left with. So mostly safe level of pathogens remain on the surface. And when people say mostly safe, it's usually acceptable for household use, uh, for restaurant kitchens, things like that. But with what's going on with the coronavirus, this pandemic, uh, people really want to disinfect things that are coming into their house. And so to disinfect, you need to take it to the next level, which is this. And that dot there is because you'll see everything says 99.9 .9 or 99.999, etc. You can never be 100% sure that everything is 100% gone unless you're doing sterilization, but that's something we don't need to talk about right now. So now looking at the new foam tablets, it's called a sanitizing tab, but that doesn't mean it can't be a disinfectant. It's just at the recommended dilution or concentration, whatever you want to call it, it's effective for sanitizing, but not disinfecting. But all you have to do is make a stronger concentration and it will be a suitable disinfectant. Now, before I get, get into this further, I do want to say I'm not a medical expert. I'm not a medical professional. My background is facilities and operations management. So that's where my base of knowledge comes from. But in, to, in addition to that, my company has been doing a ton of research on this stuff as we prepare to reopen and make sure that our spaces are safe for our clients and our customers. So that's where my knowledge base is from. I'm also pretty good at math and there will be some of that involved today. Uh, and that's also where I see a lot of mistakes when people are recommending how to make hand sanitizer, etc. Their math is wrong and the concentrations are off. So new foam tablets, the active ingredients is quaternary ammonia, which is the same ingredients as Lysol wipes, as well as hospital grade disinfectants, etc. So now to the math part, the recommended usage for this is for soaking dishes, plates, etc., to sanitize them. And to do that, you take one of these tablets and you mix it with 1.5 gallons of water. And as the label states, that gives you 200 ppm concentration. And that's suitable for sanitizing and you can let it air dry and it's safe on food contact surfaces. However, we want to make this stronger than that so that it can actually disinfect. And so here's where the math comes in because this is listed in PPM and this is listed as you can see here in percentages. So how do we convert the two? So one PPM equals 0.0001%. So at the recommended dilution for a sanitization of 200 PPM, That is 0.02%. Now that's for 1.5 gallons, right? Which is six quarts. 
And these spray bottles that you can get anywhere are 32 ounces or one quart. So instead of using one tablet to one and a half gallons, we use one tablet to one quart. We get a concentration of 1200 ppm, which is equal to 0.12%. Let's see what the concentration is here. So here you can see the active ingredients, which is the quaternary ammonium is 0.26%. So 0.26% is equal to 2,600 ppm. So if we doubled the dose here, two of these tabs in one 32 ounce bottle gives us 2,400 ppm or 0.24%. So that's pretty close. That's what I've been using, uh, and I've just been leaving it on the surface for longer. So the dwell time, which is the amount of time it needs to remain in contact to properly disinfect for Lysol wipes is listed on the label as four minutes to disinfect right there. So using a 0.24% concentration, I've been leaving it on for five minutes just, just to be safe. Now, if you wanted to, you can actually go with three tabs to one bottle and that gets you to 3,600 ppm or 0.36%, in which case a four, four minute dwell time would be uh, absolutely sufficient to disinfect the surface. Now, that's the other thing, dwell time, which a lot of people um, don't talk about when making these products is the amount of time it's required for the surface to stay wet to effectively disinfect. You can't just spray it on and wipe it off. Same thing with the Lysol wipes. You don't just wipe it on, wipe the surface off, and then leave it alone. If it's not wet enough and it dries out too fast, you're not properly disinfecting. You also can't wipe it off right away. So as you can see on the label, so if you're using any disinfectant, any disinfectant that you're using, it will list the dwell time. So be sure to pay attention to that. Some of them may surprise you. Some things have dwell times of up to 10 minutes and I doubt anyone is paying attention to that and leaving a surface wet for 10 minutes before wiping it down. So do pay attention to that. Um, as you can see here to sanitize, you only need 10 seconds. So at this concentration, 2,600 PPM or 0.26%, you only need 10 seconds to sanitize. Now, if you want to disinfect, surface needs to remain wet, like I said, for four minutes. If you're gonna use this on surfaces that come into contact with food, you do need to rinse this off thoroughly afterwards. So though the directions on this say you can just let it air dry, that was only true for 200 ppm to sanitize. If you're making concentrations of 2400 or 3600 ppm and you're using it on surfaces which will contact food, your, your counters, your cutting boards, things like that, you do need to thoroughly rinse it with water. So that's that. So again, there's the math there. Um, it's, you can use this formula, one PPM equals 0.0001%. So if you wanna make a larger batch, if you're making it in a gallon or whatever, you can use this math to get to the proper percentage. Uh, if you do have any other questions on formulations or how that works out, do feel free to leave a comment down below. And the new foam is still currently available. Uh, if you go to amazon.com or Walmart, can't get Lysol wipes, can't get rubbing alcohol, but you can still get this, the new foam tablets. They're also sold under a different brand name. They're called Steramine tablets. It's the same thing. Concentration is a little different. The Steramine tablets are one tablet to one gallon. Uh, so again, just do your math, make sure your concentration's where you want it to, and that your dwell time is appropriate for the concentration that you're using. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.